Well, we will get to find out, and as will you, ringside seats here. And Stefan Bode from Germany. And as you pointed out before, they're mic'd up, so they're talking to the they're judges. They're talking to their two judges on the table at the uh, top of the mat. So sometimes if it's a, a tough decision, they'll go video referee. They're looking, uh, the two judges are looking at a video over and over again if it's a close uh, decision to be made. So it's very, very professionally done now. And every tournament the same. Grand Prix, Grand Slams, World Championships. 22 Grand Prix, Grand Slam tournaments a year it's and incredible. also Worlds and European Championships. Even administratively, that's a massive undertaking for a federation, let alone athletically. But listen to this crowd, they're getting right up this one. They want to give their encouragement to the f home favourite. Yeah, how sharp do they look, these two? They're just both ready for it, and it's a big fight for the grips. Mudrinov will be the one that will want to get close. He'll want that arm over the top. Safarov will attack out of danger. Did well not to stray off into the red zone there. The Aziri. So the pressure being put on straight away by Mudranov, the Russian. So Mudranov wants to dominate the sleeve, that's what he wants. Then that left arm will come over the top. But I think this is going to be decided by a quick bit of footwork. They're going to get penalised here. Only one, Safarov gets it. He's the one being negative. And Mudranov is the one coming forwards. And brave refereeing from Bode, the German there, just going against the home favourite. But of course, this is all about fairness. The best fighter will win. These judokas ready to rumble here. Well, generally, they're an educated audience. Azerbaijan has an educated audience. It's a lot of judoka out there, a lot of judo people. And there's the reverse, Sinagi. Now then. He did go down there, but it wasn't as part of the movement, so no score will be given. Well, we saw the reverse Sianagi before from the Aziri, Safarov, and what was so impressive is that he, he waits and hangs on in there. It took him a couple of seconds to almost execute it, but the defensive skills of the Russian, he escapes once more. Yeah, exactly, and now they're close up, somebody's going to go, and the crowd loving that as soon as they start to hook up. This is like a football crowd here. Oh, it is. It's amazing. And the atmosphere that they build up, it's tremendous. I wish this had been the last match, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope they don't all disappear. now. they won't. Farad Mamadov, the coach, making sure that instructions get through during that break. Well, Mudrinov wants to be close. So does Safarov. And then I think once one com commits, then the other one will counter. And I think that's what's going to actually win this match. So penalty there for Mudrinov. All evens again. Well, the 28-year-old Mudrinov has won the European Championships before. But this will be a chance to make history with the combined Double bonus. Yes, definitely. Two things to fight for here. European Games gold medal and the European title. And two minutes in which to do it. Well, the referee gives the Shido warning. Well, Mudrinov gets a second penalty and now Safarov just ahead. Still two minutes, plenty of time. I still think that Mudrinov is going to commit. There's the Sianagi. Now he goes to work. Right-handed Uchimata this time. There's the Sianagi again, left and right, and the pace that these two are attacking is immense. It's tremendous. It's such entertainment because the desire to express that and produce that amount of athletic effort in the hope of winning, it's just a joy to behold. Wonderful stuff here in the Haydar Alley of Arena. Great exhibition. Nothing doing on the scoreboard, but plenty of hard work being done. Well, certainly Safarov can't afford to just lay back. If he thinks that's it, it's not. Oh, he almost did the Tayatoshi then. Another technique from Mudrinov. He's going right and left. He's changing it all the time. Exactly what his coach is telling him. 
not going to give this up. One minute 13. A little bit of a shuffle back to the middle there from Safarov. Must have had a bit of a knock. I think a looked, dead leg. Uh, a knee in the back of the leg, I it looked so. like. Just as they landed. They see he made of strong stuff. And the shot of adrenaline from this crowd will carry him over the line. But will it be with a gold or a silver? Well, we say, you know, one minute 13 doesn't sound like a lot. It's the longest one minute 13 <laughs> of your life when you're there. But he is going forward. That's good to see. Safarov goes forward. Mudrinov, he'll be going for the hip on nothing less. So this time, Safarov goes into a defensive mode. Is it going to be another penalty for him? He's got a problem with his leg. He's really struggling with this one, favouring that hip. He definitely a knee landed just at the top of the hamstring as the two of them landed, so unintentional, but... Oh, now then, something. Madrinov's going to pile the pressure on for sure. 47 seconds left. Ruslan Bobian concern for the Russian coach. And concern could be worse here because the referee evens it up. He does. It's another penalty for Safarov. He went defensive too early, but definitely he's struggling. Now Mudrinov goes into the attack. Another few attacks. Mudrinov could possibly get him another penalty. Now what's going to happen? Oh! There it is, Ipan to Mudrinov, takes him backwards, and Safarov committed, but he committed wrongly, and it was Coach Igari there from Mudrinov, and he just buries Safarov, and the crowd are silenced. Well, not even silenced, they're breaking into their customary pantomime booing, but they have appreciated a wonderful contest, just disappointment, obviously that their home favourite Safarov couldn't do it, but what a wonderful way to win there for Ruslan Mudrinov. And it was the only way he was going to do it, you called it. Yeah, and he needed to pile on the pressure, he piled on the pressure. I think one of the worst things that Safarov could have done was to start limping, uh, you know, because it's red rag to a bull, isn't it? And uh, exactly, he just went for it. He just piled on the pressure and contact came in for a big forward throw. First of all, hips come across. Safarov went for it, but uh, he just hooked to the inside of the leg there, Mudrinov, and drove him backwards onto his back. Brilliant hip on. Russia get the first men's gold medal. Look at that. Look at him drive there off that back leg. Look at the control of the upper part of the body. You asked about the belt. Can they get lift off the belt? Can they hold it? It was a simultaneous attack off the belt, and you can do that, and you can score it on. And so, a well-deserved gold medal there. I think it was the look on his face as he was walking out. There was no doubt in his mind he was going to win the gold medal. And what a great job he did, Mudrinov. Came out there, took command, and in the end, he won in the best possible way. He won by Ippon. Real gentleman as well, this uh, Russian team. Fantastic to uh, talk to them. Never used to be able to talk to them, of course, you know, way back um, sure. uh, when we were competing in the early 80s. And uh, it was a difficult thing to talk to the Russians. Now, of course, we're, we're friends with them. And uh, of course, we do a lot of uh, camps and things with them. Well, you can celebrate with them next time as we all enjoy the national anthem of Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and show your respect for the national anthem of the Russian Federation.
Well, there is the smile at the end for Bestland Mudronov. Well, Bestland was the best man of them all. And he richly deserves the European Games title. He brings the rest of his now compatriots onto the podium. Yeah, all pals now.